Going live, you're live. What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV, coming to you live from Shea Nagler, Casa Del Aaron, here in New York City. That's right, I'm back from Green Bay. Travel day today for your boy, but always got time to jump on and talk to the fine, fine folks who subscribe to Cheesehead TV on YouTube and consume all our content around the internet. Hello. Hello to everybody in the comments. Lots of trade action across the NFL today. Brian Gutekunst staying out of the fray. And I, uh, you know, for the most part, I was happy. I was I was glad to see level-headedness, for the most part, prevailed uh, across my mentions on Twitter. Some one or two outstanding on the opposite side of the ledger. But for the most part, I think people were fine with... Gudikin's not giving up significant draft capital to go get the likes of Emmanuel Sanders or Mohamed Sanu. Hello to everybody in the chat. Meister Bear, what's up? Mark, go pack go. Uh, Travis, hello, how are you? MA, get Kenny Clark healthy. I tend to agree. Cody, Star Wars trailer. Uh, I would highly recommend you check out Nagler, a Star Wars story for a complete breakdown of the Star Wars trailer. Uh, my daughter and I, on our podcast, did a shot-by-shot -shot breakdown of uh, the Rise of Skywalker trailer uh, available uh, on Anchor, Spotify, and wherever you consume your podcasts. Marshall Brown, Kumaro! Thank you for the super chat. Very nice of you. Uh, do you rem What happened with Alan Robinson? Brian, I'm glad you asked, because I haven't really talked about it. Um, so I'm watching the Bears game against the Saints the other day on Sunday. They, they played the late game after the Packers. And they, uh, you know, Robinson scores a TD to bring his team within 20 points late in the first, fourth quarter. They're getting their ass handed to him. And all I, lit, all I tweeted was Allen Robinson, because he turns around and starts jawing with the Saints um, defensive backs. And you know, is I get it. They're probably been chirping all game. I get it. But you're you, you are literally down twenty points still after your touchdown, and he's getting all mean mugging in this guy's face. And all I tweeted was, Allen. I didn't at him. I just Allen Robinson talking smack after scoring and bringing his team to within twenty. That's literally all I tweeted. And right after I tweeted it, T.J. Lang tweeted, "Nothing like talking junk after, while getting your ass kicked." Like TJ and I were on the same plane, but clearly Allen Robinson went directly to his locker room. Didn't talk to the media, by the way, and must have searched his name on Twitter. Either that or someone sent it to him. I don't know. But then literally like it was shortly after he's in the locker room, I get a tweet from him saying, keep my name out your mouth, which to which I responded. Sure thing, Bears wide receiver one. And then he responded, thank you, whoever you are. A dig at the fact that no one knows who I am. Great. So what? Doesn't change the fact that you were talking junk down 20, my dude. But hey, enjoy Chicago, Alan. You chose to go play with Mitch Trubisky. You said it came down between Green Bay and Chicago. You chose Chicago. Enjoy, my dude. Uh, can we get TJ Lang on transplants or a watch party, Christopher? I'd absolutely love it. Uh, TJ and actually, TJ and I have actually been going back and forth about getting him on the podcast. Uh, something will happen with TJ at some point this year. FMCH6444, thank you for the super chat. Long live the Republic. Long live the Rebellion. That's what I'm talking about. Eric, thank you for the super chat. Do you think Devontae will have to play catch up with with comfortably with the offense now that things are rolling without him? No. He will hit the ground running. Trust me. Christopher, timeline on Adams, nothing yet. Um, I said, someone asked me the other day, and I said the Panthers game is when I would be my guess. That would give him a bit over a month uh, of healing time. Um, I don't think he's ever going to be fully 100% until the offseason, unfortunately. That's the nature of turf toe. But um, I think they'll give him a few more games. Uh, the best thing about the Packers season is we are six and one and everyone is having fun. Winning makes you happy. Gary, I'm having fun. I know the players are having fun. I wish more of Packers Twitter would have some fun, but 
you know, people just like to be miserable sometimes. Michael, thank you for the super chat. The chemistry on this team is nuts. I agree. Northwoods, thank you for the super chat. Blake Martinez had a rough outing against the Raiders, but he's now leading the league in tackles, which tells you all you need to really know about that stat. I totally agree he had a rough outing. I think he bounces back, hopefully. T. Taylor, thank you for the super chat. Robbie Anderson, yes, no, maybe. What's Goot going to do? Robbie Anderson is on the trade block. I saw Connor reported that earlier this afternoon. To me, Robbie makes sense if they can get him for a day three pick, but I don't think they're going to be able to get him for a day three pick. Um, I thought the same thing about Sanders, but you saw what he went for. You saw what Muhammad freaking Sanu went for. I, I just don't see Gutekunst giving up a, um, significant draft capital to go get somebody. If there's a fire sale and somebody's being given away, maybe. But I'd be very surprised if Gutekunst dives into any of that. How about Jones's block on MVS's TD? Ryan, I saw a complete breakdown from Dusty on Twitter. If you haven't seen that yet, it's awesome. Uh, yes. Uh, Aaron Jones, what a player. Uh, that guy is blossoming into a premier weapon in the NFL. Not only running the football, receiving out of the backfield, his ability in pass pro and blocking downfield. Come on. Guy's a complete football player. Gotta love it. Jake, thank you for the super chat. D-line help this year's Howard Green out there. Possibly, but we'll see. I mean, that the Howard Green thing was a very kind of a once in a lifetime thing where he got cut at the perfect time right when they needed him. Uh, Jesus of the Apes, how much of the offense is installed at this point of the season? Well, the install is done. It's a question of how much they continue to create and or, you know, build off of what they've already put on tape. A lot of what you saw against the Raiders it came off of action that they had already put on tape several times. Um, I think they'll continue to do that where they'll take plays that they've shown multiple times and then kind of do something off of that. You saw that the very first play of the second half where they took the shot to MVS, that is a play that they have run a number of times where they motion Vitaly short, you know, I split him offset out of the backfield, out of the eye formation, and then they run kind of an inside zone uh, off that action. This time, they ran that same motion, but then you know brought him back across formation to be the personal protector, and so Rodgers could take that shot. Uh, you saw it on the play where Rodgers faked the pitch and then came back around. Uh, you'll see things like that, where they, they've run a, a play a certain number of times early on in the season, and now they'll start to kind of create things off of it. Roster build, Michael, thank you for the super chat. Roster building season is the off season. For the most part, I agree. I don't think you can completely dismiss adding pieces in season, obviously. You know, I think we've seen cases throughout the NFL where that's, you know, certainly helped teams. But for the most part, I agree that, you know, this is your team to quote Norman Dale, you know, Gutekunst went hog wild in free agency in this off season to create a team. This is your team. Yes. They will churn the bottom of the roster. Guys may come and go. Um, but major pieces I don't see being added now. Maybe he changes. Maybe he makes a pulls the trigger before the deadline. But again, I'd be surprised. Uh, FMCH, thanks for the super chat. No high price trades. Rodgers is perfect with nobodies. Well, I don't know about perfect and nobodies, but they're developing. You know, they're, that's what I've been preaching. It's what I've been saying. Let the kids play. Now, and I know the pushback will be the Raiders don't have a great pass defense. And hell, they got so, <laughs> Kumaro toasted a guy so bad he got traded the next day. Um, but this is what I've been talking about. You know, people wanted to make hay about the fact that they only caught the wide receivers only caught four passes against the Cowboys or um, oh, they dropped all these passes against the Lions. Yeah, they're playing and developing. You know, and a guy like Shepard, who didn't rise to the occasion, got relegated for a guy like Lazard, who did. It's the whole point. Northwoods, thank you for the super chat. Do you like the fact that the defense continues to get a pat on the back while being ranked 26th in the league? I get where you're where you're going with that. Um, well, now ranking, rankings. Who cares? I mean, truly, who cares? You know, I I can't sit here all off season talking about you know how rankings don't mean a whole lot, and then switch it to the, when I'm in season. Um, you know, points, keeping points off the board. That's the name of the game. 
they allowed a ton of freaking yardage, a ton of explosive plays, way too many. However, they did stiffen when they needed to on multiple occasions. That can't be dismissed. But now that said, I don't think anyone's coming off this game patting the defense on the back, at least not that I've seen. Um, yes, people are excited about the defense, but they also, I think, have expressed significant concern about the number of explosive plays, uh, the lack of sacks in that game, etc. So, you know, I'm not really concerned about rankings. Um, I do like turnovers and big stops in the red zone. Isaiah, thank you for the super chat. Do you think we're a big challenge for the 49ers, especially now they have Sanders? I get why people want to go here. I had a guy in my mentions today talking about how we got to keep up with New Orleans and San Francisco. I don't think like that. I get why people do. They got to beat Kansas City. All of that will take care of itself. I don't care about any of that. I don't care how they stack up in the NFC. I don't care about playoff positioning. It is week eight. Man, they got to beat Kansas City. I don't care that they don't have Mahomes. That's still a really good, really good football team with a really good coach and a ton of explosive weapons and a opportunistic defense that plays really well at home. I, I don't care about San Francisco until they play San Francisco, which they do later in the year. Well, so that's when I'll uh, be concerned about that. Is Rodgers the GOAT? No, that is Johnny Unitas. Jake, thank you for the super chat. Lazard has wheels. We saw that on the MVS TD. He did, right? I mean, maybe he doesn't have time speed, but holy cow, play speed. That kid, he was flying. He was booking. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Aaron Harper's got it right. Let's go 1-0 this week, Packer fans. That's what I'm talking about. Do you worry Petten will burn out the Smiths? Uh, I do. I, you know, there was one question I didn't. I forgot to ask um, Lafleur yesterday that I meant to. And didn't get to it, and hopefully I'll get to ask him next week. Uh, the idea that we need to see more of Rashawn Gary. You know, he, what he, I think he played less than 30% of the snaps on Sunday. He's got to get on the field more. It is time. And Fackerel actually had a pretty new, quietly nice game. But your 12th overall pick, you're halfway through his rookie season. It's time to get him involved. And I do think they are playing the Smiths a whole heck of a lot. And it might be time to see... A little bit more of the kid. Why did Lions trade Diggs, uh, Sharud? Uh, from what I saw, uh, David Burkett said that it was due, uh, d- the driver was a lot of missed tackles. And I think they have somebody waiting that they like. So they could get something for him. So they made the move. George, did Ryan Grant play any snaps Sunday? No, he did not. He was inactive. I think he was very much a he was there in case of emergency break glass. Uh, once Geronimo and MVS were able to go, he was inactive. I love how direct you are with your questions to LaFleur. Uh, thanks. I've so, actually, that is actually something I've tried to work on because I know when I first got on the beat and had access, I would meander a lot like certain other members of the media. So I try to button it up and be as direct as possible. Sometimes it's hard because you don't, a lot of times when guys are long-winded when asking a question, it is because they want to make sure that he doesn't use an out, whether it was McCarthy or Lafleur. You know what the initial out might be or the initial response might be. So you're trying to tell the coach or whoever you're talking to, look, I know this is going to be your cliched response. I'm trying to take that away from you, and I want a real answer. Um, but over time, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I just want to, I got to make sure I just ask the question because people aren't there to listen to me or us. They're there to listen to coach and get the answers from him. But thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say. Russell, thank you for the super chat. Where is all the we need to trade for a premier wide receiver talk? Looking pretty good right now. Russell, it's on my timeline. Just check my mentions. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Let's see who else we got. Any word on Savage's return date or update on his status? Nothing, Anthony. And I agree with you. They they certainly need him. Now, I asked Lafleur about that yesterday uh, in regards to there was a lot of mixing and matching of personnel. They looked very discombobulated on the back end, and that didn't seem to happen when Savage was in there. And he said that certainly could be a small part of it, uh, but it wasn't an excuse. He wasn't going to use it as an excuse. But I think, you know, he doesn't have to. I'll do it for him. Uh, Savage makes such a big difference back there. They desperately need him back. As far as a timeline, nothing yet. We'll get our first injury report tomorrow. Uh, I haven't heard anything as far as an update. I'll be surprised if he's back this week, unfortunately. 
Do you think there will be one or two new quote starters at inside linebacker next year? Yes. Will Redmond Will Redmond is absolutely trash, man. Marcus, why you got to be so harsh, man? I don't I hate it when people say that shit. Like did he have a subpar game? Absolutely. Is he as good as some other starters in the NFL? Of course not. But he's not trash, man. He is 1% of the 1% who plays in the NFL. Have some respect. I hate that. Yeah, he had a bad game. He also made a touchdown-saving tackle that helped turn the tide of the entire game. You know? God, just hate it. Is Josh Jackson a bust? Whew. Bach, uh, he had a tough one. Didn't play a lot, and then when he was on the field, didn't play very well. I'll say that. I still think it's a little too early to say he's a complete bust, but early returns are not great. Let's put it that way. Any remote chance of a Bulaga resigning? Yeah, JB, I think there's a remote chance. Um, we know he uh, they asked him to take a pay cut last year, and he refused. Uh, obviously now for good reason, um, when he's healthy, he's one of the best. I do think he enjoys being in Green Bay. I do think there's a chance, a very small chance, he could give the Packers a hometown discount. But man, if he made the open market, he could make a mint. And I'm not so sure if he's dead set on making that money that the Packers would be able to be competitive. I do think they may approach him at some point about an extension, but I would be very surprised if uh, they're able to lock him up for a significant amount of money. A, you know, the money that he could command on the open market, he would have to be amiable to taking some kind of discount, which I don't know. That's entirely up to him. Russell, thank you for the super chat. Spoiled fans talking trash. need to strap the cleats on and see if they can do better. Doubt it. See, it's not even that. Like, I get what you're saying there. Like, I understand being critical. I understand pointing out you know, when a guy doesn't play well, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But to say like, you can't talk if you've never played, that's like saying, I, you know, let's say who's the greatest president of all time. Right. I think there would be lots of different answers. Uh, to my mind, it's, it's Abraham Lincoln. I wasn't alive when Abraham Lincoln was president, but I've studied a lot and I've tried to learn as much as I can to come to the opinion that he is, you know, one of the greatest presidents of all time. Have I ever been president? No, you know, so I get it. I get it. I get the idea of like, if you haven't played, you don't, shouldn't talk crap. And there's some truth to that, but at the same time, you can still form an informed opinion, right? You can still try and learn stuff and have an opinion about it. Just, I just hate the complete dismissiveness of, oh, he's trash. He's not trash. It's like McCarthy said, they're all good players. They wouldn't be in the NFL if they weren't the best of the best of the best. Like there are, literally thousands of future gym teachers of America playing college football right now who would kill to be a Will Redmond. You know, that's all. Tyler. Ooh, that's a good question. Thank you for the super chat. Are the Packers peaking too early? I don't know. Are the Patriots? Are the 49ers? Just win, baby. I mean, would you rather they be, what, four and three? I mean, win the games. That's all that matters. I don't care how you do it. Yes, Aaron Charles Rogers wasting J.K. Scott's prime. Woo, yeah. Did the Raiders even slip once? That's a really good question. I think uh, I recall like one or two instances, but they certainly didn't seem to slip as many times as the Packers did. Um, let's see. Uh, do you think Adams being out was actually a good thing for the other receivers? I mean, you never want to see your premier guys out, right? But it certainly afforded them opportunities. Now, they haven't done a ton with them on, up until this past week, but that's what they needed. They needed playing time to develop. So you're never going to wish for the guy to be down. You certainly don't want your best one of your best players on, on the team to be sidelined, but it certainly has afforded the guys opportunities to get better. And I think you've seen that over the course of these past three weeks. T Taylor, thank you for the super chat. Do you know Vic Ketchman? And if so, talk to him ever. Um, I have met Vic on a number of occasions. Uh, unfortunately, my co-founder, Corey Banky, has talked so much trash about him at this point that uh, my association has sullied me 
in the eyes of Mr. Ketchman. I, I bear no ill will towards Vic. Uh, I enjoyed his work at Packers.com, but uh, yeah, I rarely speak to him. <laughs> we we exchange hellos at the Combine, and that's about it. Or we used to. I don't even know if he goes to the Combine anymore. Uh, LT Lysander, thank you for the super chat. Thoughts on Blake's performance this year so far? I actually think he's been pretty solid this year. This past Sunday was not one of his better games. Um, he had the uh, opportunistic moment pushing Carr to help create the fumble. Outside of that, it was definitely a rough day at the office and a day to forget. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they started giving Oren Burks a few more opportunities uh, alongside Goodson in some packages. They can't accept what they saw on Sunday. Um, I like Blake. like him a lot. I think he's unfairly maligned at times, but uh, Blake Martinez haters certainly got uh, some ammo after that Raiders game. <laughs> FMCH. Does Roger, thank you for the super chat. Does Rogers for, quote, forget how fast MVS is? I don't know, but he, he owned up to that ball, the bad ball he threw that first play of the second half. That should have been a touchdown. That absolutely should have been a touchdown. And I said at the time, I tweeted that one of these days he's going to hit MVS in stride. But he does always seem to kind of come up short. Um, he just needs to uncork it, man. I don't know. I don't think you can outthrow. I don't think you can overthrow MVS. I haven't seen evidence of it yet. I mean, does he forget? I don't know. He just needs to uncork it. Daryl, thank you for the super chat. King versus Kelsey. Brown versus Malcolm. Jair versus Hill. Thoughts. It's never that straight up, right? I mean, I get what you're saying as far as matchups go, but we saw it, you know, on, on Sunday. You would have thought uh, you'd have Amos on um, Waller for the majority of the time, and that certainly did materialize once or twice. But it's it doesn't doesn't ever kind of come up as a straight up. I mean, very rarely, maybe you'll have a Jair is going to go man up on one guy. Um, maybe you'll line up your premier corner against their number one wide receiver, but for the most part the matchups you're talking about. Yeah. Those will happen throughout the course of the game on Sunday night, but I don't think Petten is ever going to draw it up one on one for the entire game. Um, for the most part though, I got to think that, you know, Petten's got to start trusting his man coverage a little bit more. Now, yes. Did they give up some receptions in man on Sunday against the Raiders? No doubt about it, but he's been used utilizing an awful lot of zone these last few weeks. And I think he's got, the horses to run a little bit more man. Now this guy's got more information and more history and more knowledge of the game than I ever have or will. And I understand that. Um, but for whatever reason, he just seems hesitant to let these guys just go to town. You saw, or you've seen, if you've watched the Patriots this year, they've really just gone to town on guys in man coverage. And they certainly seem, if you watch the game last night, they certainly seem to be taking a page out of the Seahawks playbook back in the day where, you know, Grab him on every play. Play sticky man coverage. Yeah, you're going to take some flags, but they're not going to call holding or defensive pass interference on every single play. Man up. Mug him up and down the field. I love that. I wish Petten would do a little bit more of it. Uh, sorry, I missed a super chat hero. I got to go back up. Let me go back up. Let me be great. Uh, Michael, thank you for the super chat. Thoughts on Amos this far? I think he's been worth every penny. I think he's done exactly what they wanted him to do as far as coming in and solidifying that strong safety spot, being the glue that holds things together back there, um, being able to play down in the box. They've switched him over to free a bit now because Savages has been out and you've seen the issues they've had. But for the most part, yeah, I, I think he's done exactly what they wanted him to do. And it's really lovely having competent safety play in Green Bay again because it's been a while. Um, but yeah, I love that acquisition so far. Highlander, thank you for the super chat. Our defense is the Denver defense of the 70s. Interesting comparison. I could see it in the sense that they can get after the quarterback in bunches. I like it. Uh, I used to think dark days were ahead because no chance we get a third Hall of Fame QB in a row, but maybe we got ourselves a Hall of Fame coach. Okay, John, 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 John. Slow down. <laughs> A lot of ball game left. I had someone in my mentions earlier today on Twitter asking why Mark Murphy isn't getting more praise or or glory or whatever credit for hiring Lafleur and the start of the team and blah blah blah. And look, the early returns are certainly promising. 
But it's easy to be up and the vibe is great and you're getting all the praise and et cetera when you're six and one, right? And Lafleur certainly, absolutely a thousand percent deserves credit for guiding the team to this point. But it is so early in his coaching career as a head coach. It is beyond early. Let me remind you that Matt Nagy guided his team to a division championship and a playoff berth his first year in Chicago and was getting all the praise in the world. Now look where he is. People questioning his methods, people questioning his offense, people questioning him as a head coach, etc. The NFL is not for long. And it is really great to be here at 6-1 and one and Lafleur and Rodgers are getting along and the offense is coming along and he is pushing the right buttons and you love it. But that doesn't guarantee anything long term. Got to let these things play out. But I, I, I love the optimism. There's a lot of ball game left. All the success is due to Goody. Deborah, I don't know about all of it. I mean, let's be fair here. I mean, yes, he brought in a number of key acquisitions as far as personnel and changing the talent level on the team. No question about it. But LaFleur has done quite good work, not only on the offensive side of the ball, which obviously is his background, but just as the leader of the team, pushing the right buttons, knowing when to practice them, knowing when to lay off. Uh, how do you utilize that personnel that Brian did provide? You know, the vibe around the team is not an accident. Yes, the Smiths have come in and their personalities have helped, uh, I guess, galvanize things a little bit, but, you know, they are allowed that they that every team is a reflection of their coach. This team is no different. They are as jovial or as upbeat or as fun, etc., as the coach allows them to be. I think he's done a really good job. I think Lafleur has been a a very important part of their success so far. Oh, that's the question of the day, Dawson. Dicky or Whitehurst? Lynn Dicky, please. Light Sander, thank you very much for the super chat. Oh, why am I going? Oh. Who wins in a lightsaber fight, Nags or Banky? Come on. Please. As if Banky would stand a chance. Banky doesn't know the dark side of the force. Come on. I absolutely trounce him. Uh, let's take one or two more. Did you almost fall out of the press box when Kumaro scored? No, but I was very happy for him. Allison, Ibrahim Camo going to be back soon? I hope so. Uh, he is practicing. He started practicing last week. Uh, Lafleur said that is a wait and see. They have a three-week window to, uh, to activate him for PUP. This could be the week. We'll find out. I I think we'll get our best sense tomorrow um, when we get the injury report slash practice reports. We'll see uh, if they're any closer to operating or, sorry, activating him. Lord knows they need him. He would be an instant upgrade back there. Uh, he was simply the best tackler on the team last year when he was out there. And uh, they could certainly util utilize him and use him, uh, given what we've seen the last couple of weeks with Savage out. All right, everybody, I'm going to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. 513 people here on a Tuesday afternoon. You guys are diehards. That's why we do what we do. We love you guys. If you like what we do at Cheesehead TV, please hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. And hey, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. All we ask really is $5 a month. It supports everything we do, not just on the video side, but the website as well, um, cheeseheadtv.com. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Don't forget tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, Corey and I are back with Packer transplants after a week off. Sorry it had to happen, but this week we are back. Going to be tons of fun. Thanks a lot, everybody. Go Pack Go.